Good morning. This is Delilah with Art by Delilah. And it's morning here in Michigan. Actually, about 10 o'clock. I get up at about 6, 6.30. Been up today since 6.30. So, getting a late start on my paintings. But, you know, it's not all about painting when you're an artist. I would say I spend more time on the marketing end of it. And I'm trying to improve my marketing skills. So hey, if you've got any ideas or benefits you want to share with everybody, please post them in the comment line. I'm sure everybody would love to hear them. Today, as you can see, I'm doing a chubby, chubby, chubby little bird. And we're going to start out here painting him. I like doing fat little birds. But, of course, I like painting almost everything. I do have a problem, and it's my nemesis to try. It's furry animals. Furry animals, I don't know what it is about furry animals, but um, for me, they're more difficult. Now, birds and feathers, not a problem. You know, I paint a lot of chickens. not going to keep this background all one color. Probably add a little blue to it. Keep working it. Most of the materials I use are um, pretty common materials. The one thing I do use that's different um, is I use Gamblin brand quick dry white and the reason I use that is I paint in Florida a lot the humidity is high it takes forever for oil paints to dry and um, white you mix with everything so the quick dry white seems to work for me now I can't tell the difference in it than any of the other paints other than it aids in drying. So everybody has their thing they like. Certain brands, certain kinds of white. And um, I did have whites that I preferred, but the quick dry seems to be the best for me in my situation. And in fact, sometimes when I'm doing plein air work or I'm in Florida and doing a competition, I, I use some of the uh, quick dry reds and purples because I use those a lot, the, especially the purples when I'm working in landscape painting. And they are slow drying, so slow drying. So. When I, and you say, well, why do you use it when you're plain air painting? I use it when I'm plain air painting because I'm traveling. I've gone to some location and I'm painting there on location and I've got to load it all up and take it home. And the drier it is, the less possibility of it getting all beat up on the way home. Now, I have special carriers I use, of course, to put my paintings in. And uh, maybe I'll do a video and show some of those. When you start painting a lot, there's all kinds of products that you'll see because you'll be out with other painters and they're using something and you can kind of ask them about it. But one thing I found that Almost all painters, 99%, you know, they're like kids in a candy shop when it comes to materials. And it's like, oh man, that looks good. He's using that. I think I'll get some of that. And then pretty soon you've got six or seven easels. And, and you think, man, if I would have just bought this one when I first started, I'd be all set now. But the thing is, you don't know. 
And when I first started plain air painting, I had a little French easel I used. And I toted that halfway across the United States. But the, the little screw down rivet things that hold it kept coming undone and falling apart. And I still have that, and I still do use it sometimes. But there's other things that I prefer now. Please, if you've got some favorite products, list them here. <laughs> okay, kind of got some of the background in here. As you can see, I drag colors from the background into the foreground, kind of blend it in. That's kind of my style. Don't feel like that's kind of weird. Well, probably is. But it's my own little weirdness. Okay, we've got this big yapping bird here. I'm just going to put that in there for now and then I'll blend it in later. Well, it's got his mouth wide open. So we'll start with the mouth. Now, I use walnut oil for flow, along with linseed, not linseed, um, with turpentine. This guy, I think he's hungry. So he's got his mouth open. Either that or he's singing. What do you think? Is he singing or is he hungry? <laughs> Definitely has mouth on him. Or her. Maybe it's a her. I'm still getting this um, photo editing video stuff down. Don't quite have that under control yet, but the more I do it, the easier it's going to get for me. That's what I tell myself, so I don't give up. <laughs> That's part of the, the marketing work I talk about that you have to do. The things you don't want to do because you want to be painting, painting, painting. It's like, I want to paint. That's all I want to do is paint. And I think that's what we all want to do. Just paint. Nothing else. Well, today I've got to go out and work in my garden. Like I said, I'm here in Michigan, but I've got to till it up, put fertilizer on it, get it ready for the snow. So when I come back in the spring, it'll be all ready for me. I'll tell you, I had an outstanding pumpkin crop this year. Holy moly, did I have pumpkins. Pumpkins coming out my little ears. Use a little yellow ochre here. Now, yellow ochre is an amazing color. It can be blended in with a lot of things. And really interesting, interesting. The things you can do with it. You can see I'm using a fairly large brush. It's probably a two. It's it's so old and I've gotten so much paint on it that I can't see the number. Oh, okay, what are we gonna do with those tail feathers? Think about that a minute. 
using a pink back there. Add it to his breast. The lavender I'm putting over. When I first start in the painting, like right now, I just go in and work it. Add some color. See where I end up. And what it needs as I get those colors down. Adding the feathers on the wings. Hmm. Okay, I think his tummy's too big. He needs to go on a diet. Uh, right, Mr. Birdie. You've got to go on a diet here. Step back. It's always good to step back, take a look. I want to fluffy your tail. Didn't like that tail. A little too much color. I'm going to tone it down a little. This is transparent red oxide I'm adding. I use a lot of the transparents. Transparent red oxide. Yellow, um, Indian yellow. And of course for my my opaque colors and I know a lot of people don't use them I just like the cads use a lot of cads you know people don't use them because they feel they're dangerous and they probably are the newer ones aren't like what they used to be but there's still danger in any paint any substance in the turp. So caution. I know a lot of artists have air filtering systems in their studio. I do not. I guess it, it, I consider it a luxury that I can't afford right now. But sometimes you can afford not to. Right, maybe time to get down to some of those nitty gritty detail thingies. So, let me think about what I'm going to do for the color of his legs. I think orange.
going in here with um, transparent red oxide to add some detail to his This olive green I'm going in with, it's a transparent color and I've just got his foot a little big and so I'm going down here and trying to correct my error. Now, like I said, I'm one of these artists that think you shouldn't get too, too nitty gritty. You should. Trying to put down the general information. And go from there. Too much detail will kill a painting. Even some of the things that you think have wonderful, huge detail, when you actually see them, when you go to the Louvre, and you look at the Mona Lisa. <laughs> I think the thing that surprised me most about the Mona Lisa when I saw it is how small it was. Um, back in the day, paintings, oil paintings, you know, only, only the rich had them. Now anybody can afford them. And uh, the materials were so expensive and they, they cost a lot. And so, they made them small so they could fit in their luggage when they traveled. And they did not leave those valuable pieces at home out most of the time. They took them with them to their summer home, their whatever, and those pieces would go with them so you, they didn't, they weren't real large, at least not in the beginning, or unless you were a king or something and you had lots of help to help you move things around. In fact, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term an arm and a leg, it's going to cost you an arm and a leg. <laughs> well, in the old days, if you wanted a portrait, the more, more detail, if you wanted your arms in there and your legs, it was going to cost you more than just having your face. So that's where the term an arm and a leg came from. Yep, it was us artists. We were the ones, <laughs> the, the starving artists that were causing all this thing. You know, I'm looking at my bird and I'm wondering how he's standing up with only one leg. I think he needs another leg there. So, put him up a little bit, give him another diet. And let me see, I think I'll put another leg in there. I can find a brush that's small enough to do some tracing out here. thing about you know oils are you can wipe them off paint over them <laughs> where watercolor is not quite so forgiving you kind of gotta really know what you're doing when you get into the watercolor kind of plan it out ahead of time but even those with practice there's ways to One thing, that, one of the differences for me between um, watercolors and um, oil are the brushes. I've got watercolor brushes that I used in college that I'm still using today. My brushes that I use here with my oil colors, they last me maybe two months if I'm lucky. 
and they're very expensive, but the, uh, the roughness of the canvas wears the brush right out. They'll wear down to a nothing. And I, I save them because I use them for different things until I get too many of them. And then, of course, they meet their demise. I was looking here in my pile of brushes for one that was worn down to nothing. But they get clear down to the ferrule, down to this. There'll only be like a little hunk of brush left. So, alrighty now. <laughs> looking here. Trying to figure out what I'm going to do here. I'm kind of, I always kind of give my, give my birds these little eyelids and stuff. It's just kind of one of the things I do. always look like a bum. My clothes are always covered with paint. I am, for some reason, <laughs> one of the messiest artists I know. I've got friends that can wear the nicest clothes and paint and look lovely. I am not one of those people. For some reason, I'm going to get it on me. And cad yellow seems to be the one that really likes me. I'll have cad yellow on my nose, cad yellow. Just unreal. Still having difficulty with my legs, making them show the way I want them to. I gotta step back and take a look at things. Alright, I think now it's time to add some really dark darks to the painting and maybe lighten up a couple areas under this beak. I'm using some blue under here to darken the color I've got. I'm going to go back in and add some red to that blue. I should have probably cleaned my brush first. I think I just contaminated it. Now, back to the transparent red oxide. background color saved some of the original before I started mixing things in okay a little more on the wing Maybe just a little more highlight on the eye. I put one in there, but I think it needs a second. Maybe a little highlight on the beak. Ah, that needs to be stronger. Let's see what I can do here with the, the little toes. Delineate them a little more. Well. 
to the point where I'm almost ready to sign it. Mm -hmm. Quite yet. Well, I hope you're enjoying your fall days because soon they're going to be gone and it's just going to be snowy winter winter. And that's not so good. I don't play an airplane in the winter. <laughs> not, not in Michigan. I do in Florida. I have some friends that go out and they do watercolors. Um, they're down in Ohio and they're called the whiskey painters. And that's because they add whiskey to their watercolor water so it won't freeze when they're out painting. 